the number one issue that beginning to intermediate artists have when they're drawing realistically with colored pencil is not understanding value as a concept and not accurately rendering the values that they see. In this video, I am going to put an end to all of those problems as I discuss value in depth as I draw this lavender rose. Along the way, I'm gonna teach you how to pick out the right color, how to get your highlights to pop, and how to render really accurate, tight details. After completing a line drawing on my paper, the first thing that I do is lightly mapping in shadow shapes with a light value color. Here I've done that with lavender and you can see those very subtle shadows being mapped in. This is not going to be the full scale of these values. They're going to get a lot darker, but because I'm working on a white piece of paper, I just want to start seeing the difference between the white and where the shadows will be. And once you get that initial lay in, you can start seeing some of the form come out in the flower. And each step of a drawing, I'm trying to bring more and more form in and making it more and more three dimensional. So as early as I can start articulating the value, the better. Once I've got that really light value mapped in, and it might be more rigorous than what I have here, I might really, really dive into getting every detail done in one color, or I might just kind of lightly map it in so that I can see it. But once I've got some of that value in, I begin getting a little bit more specific with my color. And here in the center of the flower, which is going to be the very darkest part of this composition, I'm coming in with darker violet, bold reds and some magentas. Once I have some darker values established, I can start creating edges within the composition. So here I am articulating that white edge by putting some darker value on either side of it. And even in a really small drawing like this, which is only four by six inches, I'm able to render really tight details because I am using value really strategically. Using a dark value next to a lighter value is a great way to create an edge, which is what I'm doing in some of these petals as they open up around the outside of the flower. And it's also a great way to control the edges in the drawing. Within the center of the drawing, I'm using harder edges where I have a very specific shape that's darker next to a very specific shape that's lighter. But as I move from the flower, I want my viewer to pay less and less attention. And so I keep some of those edges a little softer and a little fuzzier. Throughout this whole first stage of the drawing, I am using value as a comparison metric rather than an absolute. So by that, I mean, I'm looking at a part in my drawing and then I look at another part in my drawing and I ask myself, is this part darker or lighter than that other part? And because I am constantly asking myself those questions, I'm able to create a value study of my final reference where all of the values are related accurately. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the values are 100% accurate in, re in relation to the reference photo. So eventually I am going to go over this with another pass and my darks are going to get darker and my lights might even get a little bit lighter in some areas or I'm going to kind of expand the, the range in values. But having that first map in where I'm able to see the relationships is really helpful. When I start looking for a background color, value plays an important part again. I typically don't choose a color that is the same value as the subject matter. And this subject matter is relatively light. So I went ahead and toned that original yellow color down so that it was going to be a little darker and I'd have contrast along the edge of the rose. Here I'm coming in with odorless mineral spirits and this solvent doesn't really change the relationship between the values, but it does change the way in which we read the values. Mineral spirits breaks down the pigment that is connected to the binder in a colored pencil, and it allows me to work the pigment into the little white gaps in the paper. Because those white gaps aren't there anymore, our eye is probably going to read the values darker. But if we use mineral spirits all over the entire composition, then it's going to be consistent and the values are still going to be accurate in relation to each other.
Once the solvent is dry on the paper, and that usually takes about 10 minutes to maybe 20 minutes, I'm able to come over the top with colored pencil. In this piece, I'm using a combination of luminance colored pencils, Derwent Light Fast colored pencils, and then a few Polychromos colored pencils for those really bright fuchsias and pinks that I just can't get in the other lines. I am coming over the top of that previous layer and now it's time for the values not only to make sense with each other, but I'm pushing towards the final value. So the values are not just relational anymore, they're absolute. And if I don't get that just right on the, this next pass, I can do another pass of value. I can come through again and add more color over the top. But for my personal practice, I really like to just go for as accurate as I can on this phase and not do a third pass of the drawing. When I'm looking for the relationship between the values at this point, I'm still asking myself, is it darker or lighter than this other part of the drawing? And then I will often start with the darkest part of my subject. So for this flower, I started with the middle. I tried to get those darkest values as accurate as possible so that when I lay in some of the other shadows that are a little less dark, I can say, okay, well, I know they need to be dark, but they can't be as dark as the center of the flower. Have you learned something new or begun to think about value in a completely new way? If you've been enjoying what you've heard and seen in this video so far, be sure to hit the like button. It's a great way to support the channel and all it takes is one teeny tiny little click. Thanks so much. So the colors that I'm using are changing slightly as I move away from the center of the flower. In that center area, I was using deep dark reds, even some really bright reds, and some rich purples. Some of those purples are the same. The polychromos fuchsia that I'm using, this pink color, and then there's also a magenta that is the more bright, vibrant purple right here. Those colors are going to be pretty consistent colors that I use throughout the entire thing. But the darker colors I've eliminated and I've replaced them with lavenders and grays. There are a handful of other concepts that are being applied to my color selection other than value, including intensity of the color and temperature of the color. I like to keep my warmest colors and my highest intensity colors closest to the focal point. And then I cool those colors off and neutralize them as I move away. I'm not going to dig into this concept a ton right now because I really want to focus on value, but I did want to to mention that that is also happening and that value alone isn't creating the impact within the center of the flower. So far, we've been going 10 times the original speed, but let's slow it down to three times the original speed and focus on one petal. And I'll walk you through some of the decisions that I make. So here I'm coming in with a warm lavender and I'm beginning to develop some of the volume in that petal. I really want it to feel like it is coming out. And I noticed that that particular petal is lighter than the shadows on the petal behind it, moving into the center of the flower. So as I work on that petal, I'm constantly referring back to the shadows on the inside and I am using those shadows on the inside. I'm pulling some of that color out into the, the petal as I round it out and move it around the surface. Using similar colors is important because it allows the, it, it creates the illusion of the light bouncing off of that shadow on the inside onto the surface that's curling out. When you're working with light value colored pencils and light value subject matter, it can be really challenging to keep the color in your subject clean and consistent. So I'm regularly going over the color that I lay down with a lighter value colored pencil. The color that I just used was a salmon and I use it with a slightly more pressure which allows me to kind of burnish out the edges and to create a smoother finish on the petal. But I don't put so much on that I can't layer more on top and I'm regularly coming in with a little bit more lavender or a little bit more pink to really really nudge the specific areas of that flower into different directions. I specifically didn't use a white to blend because I want to save my white for areas like this where I am really pulling the light out 
This is really helpful on the edges of the petals or any area that I want to have a really strong, crisp highlight. When I use my white colored pencil, I'm usually using a light fast colored pencil that I've just recently sharpened. I love the light fast colored pencils on the light fast paper. They work so exceptionally well, especially the white, and I am surprised at how able I am to lay whites right over the top of color that has already been laid down and I'm actually able to pull the value lighter. If you would like to check out the light fast colored pencils, the Caran d'Ache luminance colored pencils, or the light fast paper that I am using in this video, links can be found down in the notes section of this video and using my links can be a great way to support the channel. Thank you so much. Value contrast can be a great way Way to emphasize or de-emphasize relationships. In the center of the flower, I have high contrast in value, meaning there are really dark values next to really light values. And the center of the flower is the main area that I used bright, strong sections of white. I did use my white colored pencil in the surrounding petals a little bit, but I used less of that and I relied more heavily on the lighter color colored pencils that weren't white, like salmon and oyster and champagne, which are all fantastic colors in the light fast set. When you want to de-emphasize an area in your artwork, you can use values that are closer together. You can also use edge relationships to do this as well. So if you look at the center of the flower and then you compare that to the petals, on the lower left hand side. The edge and the value are much softer transitions. When I create a soft edge, I am dragging some of the color from one shape lightly into the other shape and vice versa. The other shape is being dragged a little bit into the other area. So rather than having a really crisp, clean division of color, I have a really soft, smooth transition but there's still a little bit of a distinction so that I can see the separateness in the petals. I'm also keeping my values closer together. So rather than the big jump from the bright whites on the inner petals to the darkest, richest reds and purples in the center, I am transitioning very subtly between the colors. You can use this strategy in portraits, in landscapes, in florals like what I'm doing, and in just about any other subject matter. You can manipulate what you see in your image and you can create create a stronger composition by using value and edge relationships strategically. So now you understand why value is the number one skill that you need when you are drawing realistically with colored pencil. But as you can imagine, value is a really big topic and we can't cover it completely and unpack all the nuance of every color in one video. That's why I've made this playlist where I take you through one color at a time and break down the nuance and complexities of drawing something in a specific color. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.